I'm here with Hanshi Steve at the BKK International Knockdown Championships. Um, Hanshi Steve, could you tell me a little bit about um, how you got started in martial arts or in karate? Well, I'll try and make it not too long because it's a long, long story, but many, many years, of course, I'm a South African, born in South Africa. And then my father, my mother and family, we moved up to those years, which was called Northern Abuja. It was all jungle, all that part of it. And then I started a little bit of judo, and I liked it very much. But on the way to our house, we had to go through the jungle and bush, and there was a Chinese shop. And I saw this one gentleman walking around very funny so I hid behind the bush and I was watching him all the time and it became very fascinating. And when he was finished, I walked away. And then one day, with my mother, I walked into the shop and he called me and said, Why do you always look at me? I said, I don't look at you. And he says, Yes, you do. And he said, Would you like to learn what I'm doing? I said, Yes. And he was doing show in and then I started to work with him and I enjoyed it very much. And then as I developed into an older form of schooling and my work, I decided to travel to China. And uh, he gave me a letter to a very big temple near Beijing. And he said, if you go there, show the letter and they will teach you. Wow, that's great. So I told my mother and father that they, after all we did for you for your schooling and you played rugby and you are very good, you want to go to China. I said, yes, I would like to go. So I traveled to China. Actually, I worked my way to China on the ships and I got to Beijing, yeah. to Hong Kong. Then I walked up the wall of China until I broke away to Beijing. And it was difficult because those years they weren't speaking English. And then I showed them the letter which this gentleman gave me. And then I just kept pointing and I finally got to the temple. And that's how I started with showing the temple. Oh, I loved it. It was so beautiful. We had to, in the morning, work in the fields. You know, plot and all that time. But the week I it was fantastic. And I was there for about four, five months. Then all of a sudden, Saifa, he called and said, you must go. You must go leave the country and go back to Hong Kong. And I said, no, what have I done? I've done nothing. And he said, you work beautifully. But a new government and all foreigners must leave. And they must be out of the country within 24 hours. It was a new way of looking at it, it was now Chitong, those years you came to power, and we had to get rid of all the foreigners. In any case, I went to Hong Kong, and I, 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 I didn't really like the way they were teaching me. And then they said, why don't you go to Japan? There's a man called Oyama. I'm sure you would like him very much. Then I went to Japan, and I found him, and oh yes, they were right, exactly what I wanted. And that is when I started my karate career with Kipchik. And with the help of him and training him for a number of years, I came back to this country and I developed the karate here for us, Kai, and it is what it is today. Now you've got lots of different branches of uh, Kipchik. Yes. Um, yeah. can, would you like to explain to me how they came about? Well, we first started in Great Britain. And we built up in Great Britain and we had a very good reputation. Also, I uh, was chosen to teach all styles karate because at that time we weren't allowed to do the object. And then, with a lot of work, all the styles, I became the world's best coach and we won the world tournament twice. And then they said, right, you can now do your kyokushin as you want it to. And then, of course, uh, we started Kyokushinka and with the help of many people who are all around in the state, we slowly built up the organization for my teacher in Japan and then we spread out and we are what we are today, International Federation of Kyokushinka.
I'm always uh, impressed. I mean, this is the second year that we've filmed the event. Yeah. I'm always impressed that you have so many branches that all come together and they all seem to get on and, and they all speak to each other and, and there doesn't seem to be um, any politics again. Or no, I'm very strict with that. I've uh, been around the world and been in many places and I've made it quite clear that we do not have an AFK what they call a dojo group, an open. All we have is to have courtesy and respect for everybody, irrespective of what religion, what colour they do. And therefore we have no politics and no problems. And it's a lovely life. I wish we can have a whole world like that. It would be fine. Yeah, it seems like a really good formula to me. Yes. Thank you for giving me some time and uh, I hope this continues for many, many years. Well, I'm quite sure it will continue for many, many years and I've just come back from Russia and we had a very big tournament hoping to show the Olympic people that we would like them to consider us for the Olympics and they are in. So who knows, I'll work very hard for everybody that we can get into the Olympics as coaching. Okay, well, good luck with that, and I uh, hope to see you next year. I will definitely be here, uh, for sure. I'm doing well, I'm keeping well. So I'd like to thank you for all your work that you have done, taking the video of us, and I sincerely hope we will see you next year. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.